Hey everybody, Todd McFarland here, creator of Spawn. You're listening to Comic Tom 101. And if you want to be a real collector, then this is the place that you got to hang out. What was I'm I'm curious during those conversations when um, Image was first being um, you know rolled out and you were creating this new new publishing company. What inspired that name? I, I don't think I ever uh, I've heard that. The name uh, I believe came from uh, Rob Liefeld. Oh, no kidding. Uh, Rob, Rob was there at the very beginning. Matter of fact, Rob and, and, and Jim Valentino and uh, Eric Larson were sort of the impetus of beginning the group. And I tagged on and then we ended up grabbing a couple people on D-Day when we in New York when when we said we were going to quit. You know, we grabbed Jim Lee and Wills Protasio and, and, and uh, Mark Silvestri literally minutes before we were making the announcement. I think the way Rob tells it is there was a commercial, like a camera commercial that had the Andre Agassi in it, tennis player. Okay. And, and the punchline at the end of it was, of that commercial was he says, he, you know, taking pictures. And at the end, he says something like, image is everything. Image is everything. EOS Rebel S from Canon. Right. And so Rob just liked the word. And so he was like, hey, I've got a great suggestion. How about image comics? So image is everything. So that was it. Boom. We were, we were gone. Amazing. I always wonder if there was any other names that were being kicked around the, the bullpen. The no, I, bullpen. it's interesting because people think, you know, image or even the name or venom. Or so, like that there's some master plan that we're actually smarter. We, we get way more kudos for being sort of like we're brilliant. We're not. We're just sometimes you, you trip and sometimes you fall on crap and other times you you fall on nice soft pillows, right? So, right. And, 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 and neither one of it is yours, but, you know, so for instance, uh, I got a character called Violator, right? Of course. I, I remember exactly when I got that name, my, my wife, I, I dropped her off a curb. She was going to get a bottle of wine for the evening. Some friends were coming over and I go here, I'll just, I'll just sit here, I'll wait. And as I was waiting, cause I was on the side of the building, there was this sign and it said, tow away zone, no trespassing, violators will be prosecuted. <laughs> and I'm like, violators? Well, that's a cool word, oh, man. Goodness. I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, and that was where it came from. And then, and then fast forward like 20 plus years, I'm doing a book with Eric Larson. Near the end, we didn't quite, quite see eye to eye, but that's okay. You know, I, I, I love him to death. But he wrote me this letter and said all the reasons why he thought I wasn't being nice. Uh, and the very end of it, he said, and just to let you know, it's soul crushing. And and to me, all I got out of that letter was blah, 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 soul crushing. And so I created a character called the soul crusher after that. I just went, oh, my God. Cool name, Eric. I know you're mad at me. Cool name, Eric. So who knows? Who knows where they come from, right? You just, you grab them, you grab them and you run. Some of the Spider-Man, um, like, I think starting with issue 306 or something like that, I put a hidden spider on the covers. So this is a thing that a lot of people don't know. I, I mean, I just did it. But I would put a hidden spider on the cover. And if there's no number underneath my name, that means there's one hidden spider. If there's a number, because people go, why does it say McFarland 3? That's because there's three spiders that oh are hidden goodness. on that cover. During that run, I forget when I actually started it. I should probably know better. People who have that run will go, so go back. You can have a little bit of fun. It was also during that run where, I forget what issue it is, where I put the scroll around my name for the very first time. That wasn't always there either. The signature was always the same, but I didn't meaningfully put you know, the little scroll that became sort of part of the trademark. I couldn't put my name in a place where I didn't think it was gonna get lost. So I said, hey, I'm gonna to have to put it in a box. Uh, and so I put I put it in the scroll and then I just sort of thought it looked kind of cool. I don't even think I did it consistently the next issue or whatever, but then I went, no, I start putting it in the scroll. And then it, I've been doing it sort of ever since. Issue seven of Spawn up until recently was the only issue of any comic book I'd done a cover for where I, where I didn't put my name on it. For some reason, I don't know why issue seven, I forgot to sign the cover. Duh. So sometimes people will bring that to me in a convention. I'll sign it. I go there. 
you finally have my name on the cover because I didn't put my name on it. And then I just did it recently with uh, what we call the skyline cover, you know, with all the names on mm-hmm. it and spawn and the cityscape. And I didn't put my name on it because I was doing an homage to Mark Martin's work and he didn't put his name on it. So I go, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do what he did, which is not put his name on it. Right. It was fun. It was funny because a couple of people, some, some Marvel people even, said, Todd, how dare you take Mark Martin's cover and homage it and don't pay tribute to him. No, I did on the inside. I gave him a nice big plug. But I I was trying to be so loyal to what he was doing, pay such close homage to it that I go, well, if he didn't sign it, I'm not going to be arrogant enough to sign it either. It was the first time in my entire career that I willingly didn't put my name on it, right? So I remember talking to somebody from Marvel that was like, again, wagging a finger and go, how dare you? And I go, oh, no, 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 no. No, no. Here's why I didn't put my name on that cover. Because Mark Martin did it. And I was trying to be an homage to it. But but let, let's go away from that. Mark Martin doesn't have his name on the cover because fucking Marvel didn't put his name on the cover. So now you're going to yell at me, Marvel, for not doing what you yourself did? Wow. That's, that's, that's pretty awesome. It's like, you may, you may want to pay a little closer attention to what you guys are doing, right? So the question isn't, why didn't Todd in his homage cover put Martin's name on it? The bigger question is, why didn't Marvel put Martin's name on their actual Marvel book, right? I'd like to know why that ha- didn't happen. My goodness, I love it. I love all these other insights to comics that we collect, you know? It's, it's a more history on it. And that Spawn 7, it's an affordable issue, but it is a minor key. And it's a great reason to send down to you to get signed or whenever convention season comes back up, you know? It's a really cool collectible. We'd love to just chat with you about a couple of my favorite covers you've done. See if there's any any story or if you reflect on these in, in any way different than maybe when you made them. We've chatted about Wolverine a bunch. We've chatted about Hulk a bunch of course incredible hulk 340 is one of my all-time favorite covers that oh, reflection yeah. in the end adamantium is legendary at one point they did something years ago where they did a voting on best covers of all time and there were a couple covers i was pretty proud of i thought would be in the top 100 i thought that would be one of them sure. and, and then it kept getting to the 30s and the 20s i'm like oh darn it well okay. i go ah, maybe it was like 110 it was okay and end up being number one there and i'm go. like like well it's good I wouldn't consider it great, uh, but okay, cool. Like it, it blew my mind. I go, that that's, they think that's the best cover. Like, wow, okay, cool. So, you know, it's, it's interesting, Tom. There are now a couple of covers I've done that people keep imitating, right? Sure. Issue 300, for sure, right? Of Amazing Spider-Man. I do it myself. You know, Spider-Man number one, where he's in the crouch with all the webs. And then and then that, that Wolverine cover. Right. There's those three seem to pop up sort of on a regular basis of people riffing on those, which is kind of cool. What about Batman 423? This is definitely yeah. as for, for Batman collectors, everyone's got to have it. Um, we all know the image and I think it has to do with the embracing and the, and the cape and the bats, the vibrance of the colors. But but what were you channeling when you were drawing the Dark Knight back then? Deadline. Yeah, just deadline. That's yeah. pure deadline. Yeah, deadline. So, so they came and they said, "Hey, Todd." I, and, and and I remember when I left, uh, and I go, "Hey, I'd like to do some Batman if I could. It'd be cool, Batman." Uh, which is why they came back to me a little bit later and said, "Hey, you want to do Batman year two and finish that arc?" They needed it fast. Wow. And and to me, you know, you can see in that image, I'm a big cape fanatic, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like it's been around for a while. So I just went. I want to make him just look super cool, a big giant cape. I want to make it all black. So I don't have to put a lot of detail. I don't have to do any anatomy. Uh, he'll be embracing this young lady because it's like he's saving the day, like the hero, but she'll be wrapped in the cover. So I don't have to draw any of her anatomy, right? I mean, sadly, <laughs> I wish I could say, no, no, no. I'm going to do this inspiration. No, no, no. It was like, how can I get this and get it out the door? Cause they need it tomorrow. Uh, do, 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 make it black. Don't draw any anatomy. Bam, done. And then people go, Todd, you're a genius. <laughs> you're a genius. Look at the design and the composition. Sometimes it's just, how can you make it look as good as you can, given that you have a limited amount of time and in comic book, especially when you're doing uh, monthlies, how do you just get through your book every month? 
you have to find shortcuts that the readers aren't aware of. So God bless you guys for loving that cover because it's probably one of the easiest ones I ever did. I love it. Um, last but not least, ASM 316, first Venom on the cover. Yeah. I remembered this issue during the reveal of Topher Grace put on that symbiote costume and watching him not grow. And I think of that cover because I think it's a perfect depiction of how I believe you meant Venom to be, this Hulk mammoth of a, of a character, a brute. What about that cover? It's weird because I don't know if, I don't have any recollection that when I was doing it, I was aware that it was Venom's first cover. No kidding. Right? It becomes this key issue now, right? Yeah. We're, we're only a year and a half since we sort of invented this character, Dave and I. And it wasn't like he was in an all 16 issues, right? He was in and then he went away. So now I think he's coming back, right? Mm -hmm. And so we started getting a feeling that like, hey, maybe this character has a little bit, a little bit of something behind him. We obviously, we didn't know he was going to, be the phenomenon he is today. But it, it was exactly what you just said. The design of Venom was always to create a character that was so much bigger than him physically that I felt then that the, the writers would need to force Spider-Man to come up with another way to defeat him. Sure. You couldn't just put the webs on him and punch him in the face and he'd fall over. And so to me, it's uh, it's like if I said, hey, Tom, there's, I need you to accomplish two things. I need you to take my brother and I need you to, 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 to deck him and put him on the floor. Okay, you'd figure that out. And if you got a good right hook, you'd probably do it pretty quick. Okay, your second mission is I've got this thing. It's called a rhinoceros. I need you to put that on the floor. You're going to have to come up with another strategy to get the rhinoceros over. I wanted to convey as much as possible that like this is this is a big thing and it's not going to be easy to defeat. And the bad guys should be pretty imposing, I think. The best best bad guys, I don't know. I mean, hopefully you feel the same way I am. I remember when I was reading, you know, Avengers and Fantastic Four. You know, if this if the, you know, if the B, even the A minus villain was there, it was cool, 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 but then all of a sudden the Fantastic Four was like Doc Doom came. I went, <gasps> This is going to be a multi-parter. <laughs> this, this isn't a one issue. This isn't a one issue one, right? And then sometimes it turned into three or whatever. And you're going, because Doc, you knew Dr. Doom had a bigger plan. It was going to be way more complicated. Uh, and when Ultron came or when, when the Red Skull came or when Magneto came for the X-Men, you went, boo. He's way more imposing than the Toad, right? Right. Of course. <laughs> what are you talking about? So I, I was hoping Venom would be that guy. Now, I had nothing to do with making Venom a quasi good guy, right? Wouldn't have been my choice. I would have kept that guy a villain the whole time. No kidding. Oh, sure. You need your Doc Doom. You need your, your Jokers. You need your, your Lex Luthor. You, you know, the, you're only as good as the bad guy. And so here was, here was a bad guy that was garnering attention like some of the classics. And that wasn't happening. I mean, you think about like, who are the classic characters post 1980? Arguably post 1970, right? Who are the who are the heroes that have gone on to bigger and better? And then who are the supervillains, even less, gone on to bigger and better? So when you get one, you don't you don't you don't mess with. To me, I'm like, what? Venom's now starting to be in the same league as those other guys. He's an A plus guy. Like you don't just convert him to a good guy now because like. Those guys aren't easy to replicate, but you know, then they go on, oh, we got carnage so we can replace them with him, I guess. Must have been an interesting day to see the title Lethal Protector <laughs> for the first time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I said, but you know, again, they, they, they've done quite well with it right. going in the direction. Uh, so it was obviously I, I, I missed that one, um, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't turned the clown or violator into a good guy in 300 issues. So well done. I love it. And I'm not, and I'm not going to renumber it. Never have, never will. And here, here's why I'm old. I'm completely old school. I used to buy the price guides. You got one right behind you there. Uh, but, but even the overstreet price guide. And I remember when I, when I, when I broke into comic books and I used to, I used to look at them and, and what I didn't like is that I used to have to jump around. Yeah, there you go. I didn't have to jump around. So now if you want to know what a spawn issue is worth, 
go to SP and you'll find it right right next to Spider-Man. You'll 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 find it. And every issue for 28 years, it, and it's a silly thing for me, it's just a personal thing, is sitting in that one column, right? I, I don't even know, in all honesty, Tom, I don't even know how to glue a chronological run of the Fantastic Four together. I don't even know how you, I don't even know how, you, like, because it started and stopped so many times. Which number one is the one before? I don't know. It, it, it makes my head hurt. And oh, by the way, the excuse they give, which is, well, it's too intimidating for people because the number's too high. I, I was the complete opposite. When I was collecting, the higher the number, the more prestigious it was in my mind. Because to me, it's like a battleship that has weathered the war through good and bad and decades. And no matter what's happening in the economy, that book is still coming out. Wow. Issue four, big deal. That just happened like four months ago. I've, I've also, I've never done it and I should. I've been threatening. I've been threatening to take my Spawn comic book and have two numbers on it. The regular number and then the number one. <laughs> uh, and so it's like they're going, no, you need a number one. So I go, so so same character, same writer, same artist, same color, same letter. The inside, the, everything exactly the same. The difference is you're saying that the reason that book will sell or won't sell is because of a fucking number, not because of the work, not because of the quality of the book, because of a number. If that's all it takes, for those of you that need that, there's a number one in the corner over there. For those of you that have been buying this for 30 years, there's number 316. Oh, next issue, 317, number one. 318, <laughs> number one. I'll put a number one on every issue if that's all it takes. But come on, guys, it's got to be more than that. Show me the book that has restarted its book, renumbered it as a number one multiple times, and it is selling more books today than it did 25 years ago. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So what you do has the graph is going down to sales in the 90s and the two in the 2000s. As it's going down, you get this blip. So it goes down and then oh, number one, and then down and then oh, let's do another one, number one and down. There's only one question: Are you selling more units today of that title than you were? 25 years ago. And if the answer is no, then I don't care how sexy those number ones are. They're fleeting. They're momentary moments. They don't have any impact. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. To me, it's money. It's a money grab then at that point that you just go, oh my gosh. So I just, I won't do it. My book's going to say $2.99 and I'm just going to keep that numbering. And if that is bothersome to somebody, then there's plenty of other options. Nice to hear that you're going to be sticking to your guns on that. Comic fam, hope you're enjoying the interview. Link in the description to join the March Mystery Mail Call. Today is the last day to join. To secure your copy of Joker number one by Raf Grissetti on the cover, as well as a Demon Days number one cover art done by Mike McCone. Link in the description, comic101.com to join. And have a great week. We'll see you in the next video.